Hello, this is Mr. Chavry, and Christmas is a time for giving, so I'm giving you guys a new Pokemon challenge. Can we get through Pokemon Silver with just Delibird? First thing we do is fire up the Pokemon Randomizer, and we put Delibird in the Chikorita slot. That way our rival will have Typhlosion, giving us more of a challenge for this playthrough. We then name our character Hermie after the elf in the Rudolph movie. We then select Delibird as our starter, and we can finally begin our journey. I end up naming the Delibird Santa. Santa and Hermie need to work together to ensure the kids get what they want for Christmas. Like maybe a little pony! And as you can see, its only move is the move Present, which is actually a terrible move. So the quicker that we can replace this move, the better off we will be. You might notice that we're actually using a timer for this challenge run. This is actually the first time I'm doing a timed challenge run. Now, of course, I'm actually doing this for something I'm planning to do later on with this type of series. But for now, we're going to try this timer out and see how it works. A quick note about the timer. Of course, this isn't going to be a real-time run. There's going to be moments where I actually speed up some of the battles, so you're not going to get an actual in-game timer, but this is going to be the timer for me actually playing through the game um, on emulation, speeding up certain points. Of course, I'm not going to speed up the gym battles while playing, and that's because I want to actually have those play out um, more in real time. The same will be applied to the rival battles, and we actually get our first rival battle not long into the gameplay. Of course, our rival has taken Cyndaquil as his starter, and we're going to lead off with our Santa. Present being the only move we have is not that great of a thing, but luckily we do get the explosion rather than the healing for the Cyndaquil. At first, I thought about naming the rival Yukon after Yukon Cornelius, the prospector that helps Rudolph and Hermie out. However, I decide to name him Yeti after the uh, abominable snowman that keeps following our characters around. That actually works pretty well with this game because it's like he follows us throughout the entire game. Early on, we start seeing some of the drawbacks to the move present. There's a chance that it'll do damage, but there's also a chance it'll actually heal the opponent. And it has really low accuracy for a move that you can get early on with Deli Bird. So, most of the time we're going to be missing or actually healing up the opponent. So, I kind of start seeing the drawbacks to present early on. And with its low power point level, I end up having to struggle before I even get to the first city. I decide once I get to Violet City to go to Bellsprout Tower first, and that's because I need to get some levels so Present can actually do something against Faulkner's Pidgeotto. I am desperately needing a new move to replace Present. Once we reach the top, we see Yeti causing some havoc, and Present is going to give us some more troubles because we're out of power points, we keep missing and or healing, so now we're going to have to struggle for the remainder of this battle. So now we have reached level 14, and we're ready for our first attempt at the first gym badge. Look at our stats. I think we're ready. Let's hop right in. Now on our first attempt, Present actually starts giving us a lot of trouble with the first Pidgey. Uh, we end up healing it more than we do damage to it, and that's giving the Pidgey ample time to bring our health down. Uh, we do finally get rid of the Pidgey, but that just means that we're uh, almost at half health once the Pidgeotto comes out. We do get lucky with a huge hit, um, and we would have won it there, but unfortunately, Present decides to heal up Pidgeotto twice in a row. On to attempt number two, and this time uh, we get back to the Pidgeotto. Uh, we start off healing it up. Uh, and we do finally get a critical hit, which we desperately needed. We now have access to Mud Slap, a much needed second move for our Santa. I also end up finding the TM for Swift in Union Cave, another much needed move. So now we take on Bugsy, the bug type gym leader. And you would think Santa would have an advantage here, being part flying type, 
um, Bugsy's hardest hitter relying on Fury Cutter. However, we're going to be able to take out the Metapod with a few quick swifts. Um, and you can see it took three to take this thing out. Santa is not the best with its physical attack. We really do need a special attack. Scyther comes out and hits us with a few Fury Cutters. However, Swift's not doing as much as I'd hope, and Fury Cutter builds up enough power to take out our Santa. So I go um, decide I'm going to use Present early on, because Present, I believe, has more uh, damage output. However, we end up healing the Metapod at full health. So it doesn't work out at all. So uh, I'm just going to stick with our Swift because that's shown to be more um, reliable than present. Uh, he starts the Fury Cutters later this time, giving us enough health to take it out with our Swifts. And now Kakuna is here. I'm going to lower its accuracy uh, so we don't get poisoned. And the Crit Swift finishes it off. On our way out of Azalea Town, our rival returns, and this time he has a pretty scary team. Mudslap's my only way to hit Ghastly, and without Mudslap, I can't do anything to Ghost types. Quilava comes out, and I'm actually really nervous about this Quilava because Ember is doing so much. I'm going to rely on this accuracy drop that uh, Mudslap gives us, however, we don't get lucky. So we go ahead and attempt it for a second time. Um, this time we're going to be paralyzed by Lick, and Mudslap will finish off this time. However, we're not in a good position because we're paralyzed. Uh, Mudslap hits the, the lava, uh, brings it down, and uh, we go down once again to the lava. We're going to run back over really quick and get another battle with the rival, our third attempt. Ghastly goes down pretty easily. This time we're not paralyzed, which is good, um, but the lava does go for a uh, smoke screen which is annoying. Uh, Swift seems to be better so that should have been our play it seems. Um, however uh, we do get rid of the Quilava and that's nice knowing that you know Swift is actually going to be better for us than Mudslap. And with that our rival was defeated once again and he creeps back into the snow-capped mountain. In the forest we learn Headbutt, another good move that would help us not be so reliant on present. I don't think I really need to explain why. I'm actually pretty nervous about facing Whitney. Her mill tank knows rollout, which is four times super effective against Santa Claus. So Clefairy goes down super easy, but now it's time for the mill tank. I'm going to go for some headbutts, hoping for a flinch. However, rollout finishes us off. The second attempt, I'm going to switch it up and use Mud Slap to try to lower this thing's accuracy. Um, so Clefairy goes down pretty easy, but now it's time to test out the Mud Slap tactic. And unfortunately, Rollout looks like it's going to be hitting us, and it misses. So here I'm feeling good. Uh, we just need some flinches, maybe some more lowered accuracy. And then we see the Milk Tank go for Milk Drink, which is actually kind of annoying because it can just heal itself up pretty easily. Uh, I'm going to go for some more flinches, hopefully, and unfortunately, Rollout will finish this off once again. Now we're back facing Whitney, and this time I've got another level on um, my Santa Claus. Clefairy, just as easy as before, but now Mill Tank is out. Time to go for some Mud Slaps. We get a nice miss early on, and uh, Whitney's going to go for Milk Drink, giving us some more Mud Slaps. And this time we're actually getting lucky with our Mud Slaps, so I'm going to switch it up, go for some Headbutts. Maybe we'll get a flinch. We get a miss, and we're finally able to take out the mill tank. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Time for another rival fight. And this time, he's going to be a lot more trouble for us. You see, he's got a hunter, and um, hunter has this move called curse. The Haunter itself isn't too bad, but that curse it lays on us is going to be a problem later on. Magnemite goes down easily, but now is the Pokemon that gives us the most issue, and that's Quilava. Uh, Mudslap, hoping we can lower its accuracy. Curse, however, is going to be working against us, and so is Ember. I need to train up before I face this rival. And luckily for us, we have access to the Lighthouse, which is a perfect place to go train up our Pokemon. Now at level 37, I think we might have a better chance at taking on the rival. 
Uh, Haunter is going to be taken care of pretty easily with a Mud Slap. Curse is still annoying for us, especially if we're not able to one-shot the things later on. Uh, Magnemite, though, goes down quickly, but the Quolava is still the big problem that I'm dealing with. Um, it's able to connect with an Ember, and I'm hoping to get a flinch on this thing. However, the next Ember takes us out. I'm still feeling confident, however, so I return to take on the rival. Hunter does the same old thing, Magnemite goes down, and now we're back at the Polava, the one thing that's been giving us so much problems. The accuracy drop is nice, and this time he goes for a smoke screen. I go for a Swift, which shows that it's actually doing a lot more damage than Headbutt. Uh, we take that out nicely. We're still pretty low on health. If we can one-shot the Zubat, we're fine, and we actually do. An issue that we're going to have with the next gym is that Mudslap is our only move. It only has 10 power points, so there might be times where we run out. So now we're going to actually get to see if Mudslap is effective enough for us in this battle. He's got his ghastly. We have our mud slapping Santa Claus. Let's get this battle started. Unfortunately, the first attempt we get paralyzed, and that's terrible. Uh, we're going to get hit with Nightshade. Nightshade's not really doing that much because it's based off the level. Uh, but we finally take it out, and Gengar comes out. This thing is terrifying. We do so little to it, and it does so much to us. We need it to miss, and it doesn't miss. So, trained up a little bit, let's come back and see what we can do. Uh, we're going to Mud Slap, we get a knockout first turn, Haunter comes out, Mud Slap is going to be a two hit KO, and he hits a Hypnosis, even with the accuracy drop, he still connects that Hypnosis, which is terrible, I am not happy with that. Uh, unfortunately, Santa takes a lot of damage. Um, and now it's up to if we can dodge any of these hits from Gengar, and it does the same thing. Puts us to sleep, uses Dream Eater, we get a Mud Slap in. 4 HP, we're able to take out the Gengar, however, Haunter is here, and it takes us out. After a little bit more training up, I've come back, I'm at level 42. We should be able to do this, one shot the Ghastly, uh, the Haunter giving us some trouble. Um, unfortunately, we don't knock it out, but the hypnosis misses, which actually makes more sense than how it hit both hypnosis twice the last turn. Gengar just keeps spamming hypnosis and it goes down easily. Santa here winning out this battle full HP. So at this point in the game, you are given two choices. Do you go east or do you go west? I take the east path. That way we can get the TM for Icy Wind once we defeat Price, and I feel that that would actually help us out a lot because our special attack is better than our attack. Before we can take on Price, we have to take on what is the grueling onslaught of the Rocket Hideout. And it's at this point that I get the TM for Thief, and I decide just to go ahead and get rid of Present. That move has done nothing but give us trouble since we started this run. Santa isn't giving gifts anymore. He's now taking them away. We find the rival who just talks to us and leaves. So basically, the Yeti poked his head out from behind the mountain and then left. Now we have reached Price, and once we defeat Price, we will have access to Icy Wind, which will give us a good Ice-type move that is also a special move, which is much needed because we're relying on physical attack throughout this whole game. Uh, the seal is easy. Dugong is kind of nerve-wracking because Aurora Beam can lower our attack. And I don't want that to happen. We do take those out and uh, a few mud slaps trying to lower Piloswine's accuracy so that way we don't get hit so hard with those blizzards. Um, the Fury attack's not doing much, uh, but we do get some nice lucky flinches. However, after being healed up, he does hit us with a nasty blizzard taking us out. But I'm fairly confident that we would be able to take on Piloswine if we got the lucky rolls. So I just head back in. Go for a headbutt on the seal first thing. Uh, we get hit with Icy Wind from Seal that can actually lower our speed. And I don't want that to happen to us. I don't want our attack lowered. So I'm going to try to lower some accuracies, get some flinches maybe. Uh, Dugong Seal go down pretty easily. We do get to level 49, which I'm hoping will help us out. But we get hit with um, some Fury Attacks. We're going to try to get some accuracy drops so that way uh, Blizzard's not going to do that much but he's going to just stick with Fury Attack. Um, we get a headbutt and the blizzard hits us, but we live with two HP. 
giving us a much needed victory. And with that, we actually have an ice type move that we can use on our ice type bird. And not only that, a special move that can be fired off of our superior special attack. We are doing very well now. And at this point, I decide, just get rid of Thief. It's not going to do much for us, and I don't really need it. Now we head over to Cyanwood to take on Chuck and his fighting type Pokemon. Now I am kind of nervous. It would be nice to have a fine type move with our bird, uh, but we don't have that. Icy Wind, though, proves to be such a beautiful move that it ends up one-shotting the Primate, and a dynamic punch miss gives us a quick victory. Defeating Chuck gives us access to a second stab move, that being Fly. Now we can fly around the map, not worrying about surfing back and forth, and we can get to places much quicker. Now, a gym leader that I'm actually nervous about is Jasmine. She has a Steelix, which can completely destroy us if we're not careful. Has such great defense that Mudslap's not doing much, so we're going to have to rely on Icy Wind to uh, whittle it down. The Magnemites, we've already seen, are pretty much nothing. Uh, but here I'm going to try to lower its accuracy so we can dodge some of those Iron Tails. And looking at how much Icy Wind has done, I think, honestly, it would be much better for us just to go for Icy Wind against Steelix. Not even worry about the accuracy drops. So that's what I'm going to do with the second attempt. We're just going to finish off the Magnemites. And this time we're going to just use Icy Wind. It's going to two-shot, and it looks like we can live one Iron Tail. Uh, but we actually do dodge that Iron Tail there, beating her with full health. After defeating Jasmine, it's time to go and confront Team Rocket once and for all in the radio tower of Goldenrod. And it's during this mission that we face our rival once again. To be honest, I actually kind of forgot about this battle. Uh, but we're going to go ahead, go for an icy win, take out Golbat easily. Golbat doesn't stand a chance. Magnemite, we've already seen that Mud Slap is enough for that thing. And now, Quilava, once again, giving us some problems. We're going to fly, try to take it out in one shot, and we do. So now, we know that we can take on Quilava. Uh, Haunter doesn't even give us any problems. Uh, Sneasel comes out, and not a problem either. Our rival has gotten a lot easier as we've leveled up. After saving the radio tower, we learn about a Pokemon that is on the naughty list. It's time for us to take care of that Pokemon. And of course, you could say that this was a distraction. This kind of filled out the timer. But you know what? Right now, we're not worried about the timer. And I just want to teach this Lugia a lesson. So we're going to Icy Wind it three times, finishing it off easily. Santa is now the legendary of Pokemon Silver. So now we face Claire. Of course, she has dragon types, and Santa is an ice type that just demolishes these dragons. Dragonairs go down to one icy wind, and of course, that leaves the Kingdra. Uh, I am kind of nervous about the Kingdra because it's got that water typing that makes it not weak against icy wind. Uh, but we're going to try to lower its accuracy, and it misses a surf. We miss our own icy wind, which is kind of annoying. But you can see how little that does versus how well our Icy Wind does. Icy Wind on our Santa is amazing. And we're going to easily take out the Kingdra. Now we take a detour back to New Bark Town, where we're going to go ahead and surf to Kanto. That way, we can take on the Elite Four. But before we can take on the Elite Four, our rival returns. And this time, our rival is out for blood. So here it is, the final battle with our rival. Right off the bat, I go for a headbutt. Easy knockout on Sneasel. Magneton, we go for a mud slap. Luckily, the Thunder Wave misses, but this battle could have went totally different right there. Next up is Typhlosion. And I want to fly so we avoid that Flame Wheel, but we're going to get smacked in the face with a Flame Wheel. Super effective from this Typhlosion. But luckily, it doesn't do as much as I thought it was going to do. So right there, we see that Santa is now able to take hits from Typhlosion. That is insane. Haunter, pretty easy. Kadabra, easy as well. Just a simple headbutt. And then Golbat's not going to be able to survive an icy wind. So we're able to defeat the Yeti one 
more time finishing him off for good. So now we're at the Elite Four, and I'm going to take a quick moment to look at the Pokemon that helped us through our journey. Uh, Quagsire named Surf, Oddish named Cut, Rocky the Onyx, and a Dratini named Cascade giving us Waterfall. Without these Pokemon, we wouldn't have been able to make it this far. And here it is, the Elite Four. We have to face these four trainers in a row. Can we win with only Delibird? Let's find out. So the first is going to be the Elite Four trainer, Will. He uses Psychic types. He leads off with Zatu. An Icy Wind is going to easily take that out. Uh, next up, he's going to have a Jinx. Ice Wind, of course, is not going to be able to take this thing out. Uh, but we go for a Fly to hit it on its a weaker defense stat, and that will be enough. Next up is Slowbro. Now, I'm actually kind of nervous about this Slowbro because it has really good bulk, and Icy Wind will not be able to take it out because it's not super effective. In fact, it's not very effective. But with a few Flies, we're able to take it out. Executor goes down to a quick Icy Wind, giving us... The last Zatu, which is easily knocked out with an Icy Wind, giving us a quick victory. Next up is Koga, and this guy uses Poison types. He's going to lead off with an Ariados. Um, of course, Ariados isn't that much of a threat because we got Fly, but as you're going to see, Double Team kind of scares me. So I want to keep that in mind. Fortress comes out. I'm going to try to hit it with an Icy Wind. I know it's not very effective, but this thing has Sky High Defense. Uh, we do go for Fly as we see a Protect. Um, and of course, this thing has Swift, so we're not going to be able to avoid that. And it's going to hit us with an Explosion. Now, with that Explosion, there's not much we really can do to survive that. So what we're going to have to do is level up to where we can actually maybe two-hit KO this thing. So now I'm going to go back. I think if I'm able to be up in the air when Koga goes for explosion with that fortress. Maybe we can go ahead and pass by without having to do a lot more leveling up. Uh, Eridos, of course, double team. That's always pretty scary. But now fortress comes out and I'm going to try to fly hoping that the fortress goes for uh, explosion while I'm up in the air. Uh, what you're going to see is unfortunately he never does that. He always goes for swift while I'm in the air protect when I'm about to attack um, and then he waits until I go for my own icy one before he goes for explosion so uh, that's not going to work out either now to level 70 can we do it here um, I'm hoping I don't have to keep leveling up in order to defeat Koga but I will if I must but at level 70 I'm hopeful that we might be able to take this thing out we hit the Ariados with fly of course, Double Team is always scary if we were to miss. Um, and I'm going to go for an Icy Wind. And looking at that, that looks to be a two-hit KO. And it is! Icy Wind helps us get past the Fortress. Now it's time for the Muck. I try to lower its accuracy as he goes for a Minimize. Meaning that I'm not going to be able to hit him as much. Uh, unfortunately, we never hit him again and we get poisoned. And now it's Muck that's a problem. And here I'm just kind of showing you how I get my levels up. Um, of course, with emulation, you can speed up the actual uh, gameplay. So that's what I've been doing in order to gain a lot of levels really quick. Because if I didn't do that, this playthrough would be a lot longer. Level 75. Is this the level that I can finally take down Koga? Let's find out. This time I go for a uh, headbutt on the Ariados because I want to flinch, preventing any possibility that we would miss. Luckily, we don't miss there. And, of course, Icy Wind, two hit KOs, the Fortress at this range. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Muck actually has higher special defense, so I'm thinking it's not going to uh, do that much. But it actually ends up doing a lot better than any of my physical moves. So uh, Santa here with the Icy Wind actually showing that... That was actually probably the best play for me. I should have probably done that the first time I got to Muck. Uh, but I didn't realize that Muck would have died to that. And we quickly take out the rest of Koga's team. We don't talk about Bruno, no. Why not? Because Bruno uses fighting type Pokemon. As well as Onix. Well, anyway, I'm going to go for Fly here. As we see that Hitmontop actually has Detect. 
So there's a good chance the rest of Bruno's team has detect. So Fly's not really going to be helping me out. We get smacked with a Fire Punch, but luckily in Gen 2, Fire Punch is a special move. We have good special defense. Icy Wind destroys the Onyx, and now it's time for the Machamp. Now I'm actually kind of nervous about the Machamp because this thing is bulky and it has sky high attack. And it's going to hit us with a Rock Slide. Now Rock Slide is four times effective. And this actually gave me a heart attack when this happened. But we end up surviving with red health. Bruno goes ahead and heals up Machamp. But we already seen the Icy Wind as a two hit KO. So we're just going to go ahead and take down the Machamp. And that leaves the Hitmonlee. Now Hitmonlee has a higher special defense. So I go for Headbutt. And that ends up being enough to take this thing out. So that takes us to the last of the Elite Four, and that's going to be Karen. Karen, who uses Dark type Pokemon. So Karen has an Umbreon, and this thing is a very bulky creature. Uh, we luckily get a crit, but we do get Sand Attack, and that's going to lower our accuracy. Now we're going to see the Houndoom! And I'm not going to lie, Houndoom's another one of those Pokemon that I was terrified once I see it come out. Luckily, we survive the flamethrower, and the next turn we're able to take it out with a fly. So Santa just put Houndoom on the naughty list, and who else goes on the naughty list? This Gengar. And we're a long way from having trouble with these ghost types, because fly is enough to take it out. Icy Wind deals with the Murkrow. Uh, we also have the Vileplume, which is kind of weird. Karen, the dark type trainer who uses a Vileplume. Vileplume's not much of a problem for us either. And that's going to give us the victory against Karen. And it all comes down to this. The champion of the Pokemon League. And it's going to be Lance. Now if you know a thing about Lance, he uses Dragon types. But not only Dragon types, his Pokemon's commonality is that they're all Flying type. So hopefully we can take advantage of that here with our Santa using Icy Wind. So let's see how... This champion battle's going to go down. Lance leads off with a Gyarados, and I'm kind of nervous about this thing. Gyarados has some decent bulk and attack. We're going to hit it with a fly. We get smacked by a Hyper Beam, but Santa is in Hyper Mode, so it does nothing to us. Luckily, the Gyarados actually set up a Rain Dance, and that's going to help us out against this Charizard, because it's going to weaken the damage output of its Flamethrower, giving us a quick easy knockout on that thing. Dragonite has no way of surviving an Icy Wind. His other Dragonite uh, no way it's going to survive an Icy Wind. But that's going to lead him to send out his Aerodactyl. Of course, Santa is four times weak to rock, but that's not going to matter because we take out the Aerodactyl. And that's going to lead the last Dragonite who goes down easily to an Icy Wind. Santa getting a victory here. 4 hours and 49 minutes into the game, and only at level 78, which is actually a lot better than the Pichu challenge. Let me tell you, that Pichu challenge made me not want to do any more baby Pokemon challenges. That was so miserable. But here, Delibird shows that it can actually shine pretty well. And it's important to note that the 4 hour, 49 minutes does not match the in-game time, because according to in-game time, we played for 40 hours. But the 4 hours 49 minutes, of course, represents the time it took me playing through the game with my fancy little speed up button. But there it is, a nice playthrough of Pokemon Silver only using Delibird. Of course, we could do the post-game stuff, uh, but for these challenges, I don't do any post-game. Uh, and that includes Gen 2. The game ends when we get the credits, and here we have the credits. I hope you guys have... A Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever holiday you guys celebrate. If you like this challenge, let me know in the comments. And let me know what Pokemon you would like to see me try out this sort of thing with. Um, of course, I'd like to do some more Gen 1 challenges. Because I feel like it's actually easier to get through Gen 1 during these challenges. And of course, eventually I want to go into doing some Gen 3 challenges. Uh, but we'll get there when we get there. Of course, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in the next Pokemon video.